Good evening. My name is Sergeant Anthony Sclafani, and for nearly three decades as well, I have served the city as a devoted police officer. <laughs> Today, I stand before you with solemn obligation to address the false public assertions being made by Mayor Rosano regarding Chief Galaska, assertions that fail to capture the full extent of the truth. Allow me to present a detailed rebuttal grounded in facts and supported evidence. Contrary to Mayor Rosano's portrayal, Chief Galaska has indeed been the subject of complaints prior to assuming his role as chief. In March of 2021, I personally filed a discrimination hostile work environment complaint against then Captain Galaska, also citing numerous policy, police policy violations. This was not an isolated incident. Rather, it was part of a broader pattern of behavior that warranted serious consideration. Furthermore, in June of the same year, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, accepted my complaint and issued me a notice to sue, leading to an ongoing federal lawsuit against the city. But it's not being disclosed. Yet, Mayor Rosano chooses to remain silent on these critical matters. Mayor Rosano, despite being aware of Chief Kalaska's pending EEOC complaint and ongoing investigation, all of you proceeded with his appointment as acting and then permanent chief of police. The decision was made despite multiple individuals, including Mitch Pelletier from MargateNews.net and former Commissioner Lee Pierman, raising concerns regarding the appropriateness of such an appointment among these ongoing investigations. Even Commissioner Simone, in a commendable act of transparency at the following commission meeting, voiced apprehensions as she discovered there was an ongoing investigation against then Captain Galaska. In addition, she was highly alarmed with the relationship between Captain Galaska and the inv individual handling the investigation, then Sergeant Costick. Regrettably, Mayor Rosano and the commission chose to remain silent. Nobody reopened it, disregarding the ex ethical priority for transparency and accountability. The city's response to my discrimination complaint has been sadly inadequate. Despite my efforts to bring forth legitimate concerns, Internal Affairs completed a deceitful investigation against Chief Galaska, focused solely on policy, police policy violation, neglecting the core issues of discrimination and hostile work environment. That's three years ago. Three years have now passed and the city has yet to conduct an investigation into my discrimination and hostile work environment complaint. You ignored it. You just let it go like it wasn't there. This negligence has allowed discriminatory practices, personal attacks, and manipulated promotional exams to persist unchecked, causing a toxic environment within our department. This is a good city. It's a good department. These are good people. Notably, Everything I said in my complaint three years ago has been proven to be true. Read it. Pull the public records. Yet, Marizana, you choose to remain silent about those. You don't bring it up. Why? You bring up everything else, but you don't bring that up. In addition to my lawsuit, another EEOC complaint for discrimination and failure to promote. You, you want to keep? You want to keep going, Ralph? I would like to keep going. I need maybe two more minutes. How, how, much, how, time much, to me. how much more do you have? Uh, I have no, one, uh, just this much left. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. In addition to my lawsuit, another EEOC complaint for discrimination and failure to promote was lodged against Chief Galaska. Now you have two. Furthermore, there is another ongoing lawsuit against Chief Glad and multiple other complaints for sexist and discriminatory comments that have been previously filed. Despite these alarming developments, Mayor Rosano has chosen to remain silent, failing to disclose these critical facts to the public or the news media. Furthermore, the city's expenditure of thousands of dollars on legal defense to a significant law firm they hired to shield Chief Galaska from accountability raises serious questions about misplaced priorities. Mayor Rosano, Vice Mayor Schwartz, commissioners and residents, I present, I present these facts not as mere allegations, but irrefutable evidence of a troubling pattern of behavior within our police department. The overwhelming vote of no confidence from over 75% of our department underscores the urgency of the situation. Morale is at an all-time low. All right, that, thank you. 
Does the attorney would like to say something? I would just say in, that I would request the commission to not comment or respond in light of the pending litigation. Thank you. I'm Lori Marrero. <clears throat> I wanted you to put a face with the name. It took a lot for me to come forward with this complaint and even more to stand up here tonight. Mayor, you've made a massive public turnout to have the support Chief Galaska. However, you're being misled by lies. Contrary to what the mayor is saying on social media, this has nothing to do with contracts, wages, officers not getting what they want, blackmail, or people not liking the chief, as some of you have claimed. The truth is, you're protecting him because he's your friend and your neighbor. Although I do not need to defend myself or my actions, these messages are not two years old like you want people to believe. According to the investigator, these messages referencing me were written in September of 2023. That's not two years ago. This isn't the first complaint against Joe Glaskis. He had, he's had multiple against him going back to when he was a captain. As a matter of fact, he was in the middle of being investigated by internal affairs when he was appointed by the commission as interim chief. I know this because I was one of the investigators assigned to investigate the allegations against him. That's another story. My first complaint was filed in October of 2021, which was conveniently swept under the rug, as many of the complaints are, so the public never sees it or knows about it. The bottom line here is that my second complaint was taken seriously and warranted an investigation by a third party agreed upon by the commission. The findings, which apparently were not in your favor, were sustained as set forth in the report, which is public record. The independent investigator found that the chief does in fact foster a hostile work environment. The second amendment to her investigation states that there's sufficient evidence to support further investigation into gender bias that needs to be voted on by you, the commission. The only way she was able to do that was to do it in two parts so that you would have to vote on it. It is clear, Mayor, that you're, bi that you're biased in this incident. These findings themselves are grounds for termination of the chief, but you clearly don't care about the employees of this city, which you have proven with your social media posts protecting him and lying about how why we have come to this point. It's clear you care more about politics and protecting your friend. We're not here to debate whether you think that he is a good coach, a friend, a neighbor, or whatever he is to any of you, and he probably is. We're telling you that Chief Galaska is not fit to lead this agency, and the agency has no confidence in his ability, and that has been proven without a doubt. The voter no confidence was called for by the members of this department solely because of the investigation and the revelation of his true feelings, Chief Galaska's true feelings, toward the members of the department. They called for it. We called for it. Women, officers, officer wellness, he put it all in there in how he feels about it in those text messages and its public record. Chief Galaska has now muddied the waters for any future promotion, demotion, or specific specialty unit assignment within the department. He's paved the way for retaliatory lawsuits, hostile work environment, and gender bias, and EEOC complaints. If you vote to keep Chief Galaska tonight, a chief who now has a sustained hostile work environment complaint against him, along with evidence of gender bias, this will not end. We will continue to seek the justice that we deserve. We as police officers want true leadership, which is something Chief Galaska cannot provide to us. Allowing Chief Galaska to continue as the chief of police, you will be allowing the hostile work environment to continue and create a division between our department and the citizens, which has never happened before. And frankly, that's not something you'll ever recover from. I know you're going to attack me publicly and say bad things in my statement, and I'm prepared for it, but this is the truth. Is there anybody else? Hi, good evening, Jonathan Krawczyk, Margaret Resident. There's an old saying that love is blind. Sometimes we have such love and admiration for another person that we can't cope with accepting an individual's faults or mistakes. You need to ask yourselves, if you were to find out that a loved one did something that they shouldn't have, how would you react? Or if you turn on the news and saw the picture of someone who you love wanted for a crime, would you bring yourself to turn them in? This should not be personal or a popularity contest because that just maintains the good old boy system that we're trying to rid our system of. You need to set aside your personal relationship or friendships for the individual just because you may be best buds or neighbors. He could be the best baseball coach or best neighbor anyone could have ever asked for. That's not what we're here for today. We're here to decide if we as a city are gonna condone this type of behavior from any employee. Replace the accused name with John Doe. And if John Doe had spoken about a colleague, superior, or subordinate, the way we've seen in the report and text messages from less than a year ago, what would you expect the consequence to be? Last meeting, one commissioner told us what he'd expect to happen if he'd ever sent those type of messages. 
And we're not talking about just any employee. We're talking about a department head who's expected to be the pillar of integrity in our city and held to the highest standard. If you cannot see past your love for somebody, then place your loved one in the position of the victim. If your spouse or daughter was the victim in this case, what punishment would you want for the accused? It's a position no one had ever hoped to be in. And we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the actions of a city employee who violated police department policy, the city's poli policy on professional conduct, which states all employees are expected to conduct themselves in a manner to promote the best interest of the city, department, and other employees. Positive conduct includes treating all employees with dignity, courtesy, refraining from conduct, behavior, or language deemed offensive or undesirable, or which is contrary to the city's best interest, being responsible and accountable for the employee's own conduct. Conduct resulting in accelerated disciplinary action includes violation of respectful workplace or ethical standards policies, spreading malicious rumors or gossiping about another employee concerning their personal character conduct or conduct. And the Market Police Department standards of conduct is gossip. Personal sh personnel should not engage in gossip detrimental to other personnel, the public, or the department. Veracity. Personnel should not knowingly make false written or oral statements. And job actions. Personnel should not instigate, lead, or contribute to job actions that undermine supervisory authority. It's time to stop the bleeding and put this to rest before the city's reputation is so badly tarnished that no decent employee will ever want to work for our city again. They'll know that nobody here has their back or will protect them against discrimination, harassment. And it's time to do the right and noble thing for everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good evening. Scott Sawyer, Sergeant with the Margate Police Department. Um, if you could speak into the mic. Sure. Thank you. Put it up. Sorry about that. Uh, I never wanted to be involved in anything like this. I appreciate your time this evening. Um, it's embarrassing to stand here and have to go through all of this. Uh, detrimental to the police department, for sure. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of citizens have come up here and spoken, um, and they all love Chief Galaska. And I have no doubt that Chief Galaska to them is a great guy. He is to a lot of people. I don't think that anybody is disputing he's a great guy. It's not a matter of that. It's about the type of leader he is and the type of leader that's needed in this police department. People talk about, um, you know, give him six more months. Uh, what's gonna change in six months? <clears throat> I don't think a lot of people, the citizens of the city, know how police department operates. It operates on a chain of command. Uh, we had votes. There were three majors who don't have confidence in them. Six out of seven lieutenants who don't have confidence in them. I'm pretty certain all 12 sergeants don't have confidence in them. Unfortunately, they weren't broken out, but we've certainly had conversations. Then a vast majority of the rank and file don't have confidence in him. So I ask you, in six months, what's going to change, Commissioner Schwartz, when there are three majors who won't potentially follow commands? Six out of seven lieutenants, 12 sergeants, many officers. And people say, well, just fire them, right? Well, what, what will be left? You're they, saying they, they won't follow command? I, I don't know. But you don't just know. said it. It's, I suppose, it's a, I suppose it's, a, it's a possibility, right? So, so how is he supposed to fix things? How will he? How is he supposed to fix when you all have all those? How people? is anybody supposed to fix if? if well, it, you just answered the question. Bring somebody. Well, I'm in. looking for the answer. Right. If you knew the answer. Let us know. Right. Bring someone in from the outside. Okay, maybe we will uh, right under him, so he can still see what's going on, and okay. he could be an earful for that person. Well, it seems like you because already bringing, have a plan, sir. Because bringing somebody in is not going to solve the problem. You're going to bring in, we've heard it tonight, you're going <laughs> again, to bring somebody in again, I, to I, absorb I've, more I've been policing problems. for 18 years, sir, and uh, I actually have worked in several departments, and I haven't seen a department so dysfunctional. And that starts at the top. That starts at the top. Okay. So a police, off, a police department works from the top, and without a leader that's trusted, we have enough problems with outside in the public. Uh, you, you need to trust what you have inside and feel safe in there. And if you have a vast majority of the police department voting no confidence, you know what the answer is. So what's gonna change in six months? What metrics will you be measuring it by?
Thank you. Before you, just give me a second before you speak, because you've asked me. You've asked me what would change in six months. It would be my hope that friendships would be cut, whether it's upper management or not. It would be my hope that it would be a wake up call, something that should have been done two and a half years ago. I'm not foolish, neither are any of the rest. It would be my hope that a message was sent loud and clear that you either have this amount of time to fix what you should have fixed before, or there's the door. I understand you're telling me things, certain things are not repairable with the, with the, the administration, but then I would also wonder if the rest of the leadership on down to a certain point also needs to go, because I would like to think that even though there's a protocol and a line that people who saw something wrong would have said something regardless of where they were. And if they felt they couldn't speak to the city manager or the people above them, then I would have hoped that those people would have found my phone number, figured when I with my car was in the parking lot and said something to me because of nothing else. I have a record of being tremendously fair, fair with this. This is giving me as much as a headache as it's given you because you work there. You have no idea how listening to all of this conflicts me. You have no clue of the headache I feel right now and where my blood pressure is because I don't know how to do a win-win on something that is long past that. Now it's simply a matter of who saves face and how we make the department better. Do I know if he's the person that can do that in six months? No, I don't. Do I think it's possible? Not even sure. But I listen, and do I think that 30 years in a job makes it necessarily that you bend the rules to make it okay for those things to happen? No, I don't either, because it makes me wonder about the 30 years. Now, am I aware of some of the things that are out there? No, I've never gotten to read them, but I will now because it didn't come across our desk. And we're told we can't have this conversation anyhow, because I assume it's pending, and therefore we can't have this conversation. It's been eye-opening in the last three weeks about some of this stuff, because you know when no one complains, you assume everything is good. Just as me sitting there for weekends of my life, reading those three volumes after the fact of our last chief, after the facts a little late, during the fact would have been great. So I think there's a responsibility from people in the department. If you see something, say something. But if you wait for two and a half years to go by, regardless of whether the text, and I know the text message is way sooner than that, but if they're held on, they're held for a reason. I, I, there's so much wrong with this that I can't figure out a way to heal any of you tonight. A commissioner because Schwartz one way or the other, whether it's get rid of him tonight, the union feels that no one's heard them. Whether it's keep him tonight, the citizens feel like they've, what, it's the other way around. Get rid of him and the union has felt that they have heard him. But the citizens will feel that we're not weighing 30 years of work against some of that. Now, do I know more and do you know more than they know? Yeah, not more than the union because this is all new, but it's, it's a very difficult decision to make. And if you don't think that some people have already made it, I get it. Some of us are trying to figure out how this works out. Good for the people who have been maligned, who have felt that they have not been able to move up for whatever reason because of, of, a, of a culture that was inherited. For me, this is extraordinarily difficult. And depending on who's standing up there, I change my mind each time. I don't know what to do with this at the end of this. But Commissioner it's Swart, in fairness, easy. and I, I agree with, I understand your passion, but. Commissioner, sir, she had her light on. Commissioner Simone, if you wanted to go or let him go, it's up to you. I'll be quick. No. I, I, I just. I'd like to make that motion. If it's see something, say something. I mean, look, someone saw something, 
they said something, multiple people have said something, officers. I'll pause if you guys want to keep talking. I'll wait till you're out, and I've got all night. Why are they going to come forward if you're just going to shoot down what they're telling you? Why didn't they come Why? forward and tell it to me when it was happening so that it wouldn't have been shot They down? did, and we had an investigation. No. No, they didn't. I read what somebody wrote. So he fucked. I comments from the the, one of the text messages was from September. Yeah, but this of is one a, big one. This is a culture. When somebody tells me I'm going to see more, I'm going to see more. When somebody tells me that now people will finally get, I asked the union, why, if there were such problems going on, why didn't we go through HR and use the grievance procedure? And the answer I got is people in this profession don't like to do that. They can don't like can to I complain. say that people in this profession you in Margate don't on. trust your HR? They don't trust them because you've stuck Phil, up for them in the past. Phil, wait till I press so, the button and you say who you but are. But that's that's your answer right but there. You can they don't trust they don't trust HR because they they Phil. stuck up for the wrong people <laughs> that were filing sexual harassment complaints. Phil, you need to wait. Okay? You need to wait. I'm the last person that wants to be up here and speak. Just and you're gonna it. not get Philip to Philip Horn, City of Margate, up. resident. City you of Margate resident. Phil. Okay. You That's gotta fine. wait, Phil. So if she wants to say something to me, she outranks you right now up here. Or anybody else who wants. Otherwise, I'm gonna. You done? For now. Okay. Can now, I speak? now your name and your name. Phil Horn, City of Margate resident, um, and I am currently employed as a as a sergeant here on road patrol. Chief Galaska is not a bad person. I never released those text messages because of his character of who he is as a family man, baseball player, anything like that. All right. No one here knows the facts. None of, you, none of you sitting in this room know the facts because you're all his friend. I was part of that group. I was in the circle. He promoted me. He mentored me. He was my friend. We spoke every day of the week. Okay. You guys don't know what it's like working here. My new employees are miserable. They don't want to come to work. We're working on minimals. The admin upstairs is fighting each other daily and it's coming right down to our new employees. I have a new employee that's been on, on for, she's on her second phase of FTO and all she hears is screaming and kicking about how miserable the officers are in this place. So this isn't about him as a person. You hear about his leadership, right? You've read the text messages. Those were said to me. I didn't save those to blackmail. You guys need to look up what blackmail is. I have not gained anything from this. You guys also need to look up what insubordinate means. I'm gonna read you something. It's defiance of authority. It's refusal to obey orders. There's an open door policy here with our administration. You can go into any one of their offices and talk to them all you want. After Sergeant Blanton took her lieutenant oral interview test, she was able to express how she felt about that test. And this is what was said. It's very disappointing that the other two were informed and I wasn't given the same courtesy. The other two was now Lieutenant Bill Schneider, who is my direct supervisor and Sergeant Coben. Blame is always pointed at other people. Why didn't I pass, she asked the chief. Honestly, when I saw the panel, I knew it wasn't going to be impartial. That was spoken about today. It was the chief and his majors inside that interview. They controlled the way the interview went because she passed the same interview on the last time and he promoted her twice. Two times she was told that she was promoted to lieutenant and it never happened because there's a friendship problem here. There's a circle here that I removed myself from. I knew it wasn't going to be impartial. I have a lot to say, but I'm so angry and disappointed that I can't find the words I want to say at the moment. That's what she emailed him. This was his response, and this is called fear. Your email was unprofessional and insubordinate. You will meet with me and Major Palma on Tuesday at 4 p.m. in my office. That is why I released these text messages. I gave her power to fight someone 
that accused her of being insubordinate? How is her expressing her opinion on how she felt about his interview process insubordinate? Those messages are real. They were said. The women here in our police department do not have a fair shot. You need to hire someone that knows how to run a proper police department. Stop with the, I'm going to give him 30 days or I'm going to give him 90 days. I don't want to see the guy lose his job, but he's not fit to lead this agency. Bill, can you sum it up? Have a good night. Stay there for a minute, Phil. No, I don't want to. I have a question. I don't want to. There's there's so much favoritism and there's so many problems going on here that all you guys want to listen, you guys want to protect your friend. I get it. Get out of that Bill, circle. It is. It Bill, is. It Bill, is. It is. You have him coaching with you. There was a giant group. You're not impartial. You have him coaching with you. They all moved up because of people they knew. And that's what it was. There were games played then. It's not. There was a problem here. There's a problem in this department. I didn't give a statement to Rhea. Okay, I spoke to her briefly on the phone. I didn't, you want an investigation, authorize Rhea to do a full investigation. I'm telling you right now, you guys won't Phil, be having not, this conversation afterwards. So we're, we're discussing the investigative report no, we have. That's the, the preliminary. The emails that you that, held on they, to. They're not emails, they're text messages. Text messages. We they're saw what text you said messages. We saw you said, hey, you're gonna use them. Thank you. Trust you me, Mayor, you. trust me, Mayor, there's a lot more that you need to hear, okay? Stuff Phil. involving you, but I didn't give those. I didn't give those out. The what? There's stuff involving you in my text messages. Tell me what it they is. They haven't so. been released. I but sent you. I don't save messages on my phone. They're saved in a cloud automatically. It's called technology. I can scroll right oh, now. So you're, I can scroll so right now and go back two years. Okay. I go back two years. Out. These right. were not saved to blackmail anybody. I'm the, I did not benefit from this. Right? This has Bill. caused me nothing. But I live in this city. I work in the city, and now I'm having a hard time Bill, policing I think in the city to stop. because I expose I think people. It's time for you to stop. All right. You Good night. Your phone. Good night. We wouldn't be Good sitting night. here right okay. now. Thank you. you there's a problem, and Thank I'm, go I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep going. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to release my entire phone to everybody. Okay. Good. Good. I wish I could have asked him a question. Okay. Ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bettina, and I'm a sergeant on road patrol. I've been working in the city of Margate for 18 years. And I, too, like Joe Glaska as a person, but there are many different ways to lead. Leadership is about providing an environment for those under you to learn and blossom so that after you leave, the place continues to evolve. It's also about taking care of the people in your charge. And this is not being done. He does not support the supervisors, which is a big problem. Specifically, when he creates an environment that allows officers, which are his friends, to jump chain a command because they have a complaint. When supervisors try to implement accountability for those officers so that the community receives the proper service from us, and also blossoms on camaraderie between coworkers. On numerous occasions, if the officer doesn't agree, all they have to do is send him a text message. He then shuts it down, ultimately undermining the supervisors and causing a lot of confusion with how a proper rank and file should go. This lowers the bar for overall police work. This affects the community and the future of how police should be expected to work. He continues to undermine and discredit those under him. This is not leadership. This is destruction. He is not honest and he does not take accountability. This has created a tone within the department and instead of inspiring officers to do better, it has shut officers down. And this kind of leadership creates mass confusion. And because there's no trust, it creates a dog eat dog world amongst the department. This will be tough to repair as an agency, and a good leader would not allow this mockery and embarrassment to ever take place. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak? All right. What, you want to take a break? 
All right, we're going to take a break, uh, for a 10 minute recess, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Meeting, meeting recess. Good evening. I am Sergeant Crabtree. I work for the Margate Police Department. I am in charge of the traffic division. I just had a few things I wanted to speak about. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, first thing I wanted to go about is I heard a bunch of comments go on about how Chief Glasgow has been here for 30 years. That is correct, and I commend him for that time. However, that was said in a manner that we should take that in consideration of keeping him. And personally, I think that that should also prove that he should have known better than to do the actions that he did. Uh, I also personally, prior to the chief being the chief, he was the captain, and I overheard him speaking derogatory remarks about uh, Lieutenant Eller at the time she was my direct supervisor, and this was in a um, group setting where he was speaking to a sergeant and I was present and he was aware that I was present. So he has a history of speaking about uh, people's direct supervisors in a derogatory manner um, to their subordinates. Because in my opinion, yes, the contents of the text messages are a major issue. But that's only one of the issues. The other issues are the fact that this, he was speaking to Lieutenant Eller's um, subordinate. That was uh, Sergeant Horn. She was Sergeant Horn's direct supervisor. And he was speaking about her in a derogatory manner. And in my opinion, as being a supervisor, uh, if I knew that my supervisor or my chief was talking derogatory remarks about me to one of the people that is in my command, that's another issue on top of the content of what he was saying, along with the fact that he also made derogatory remarks about several different supervisors in our department to Sergeant Horn. Um, this is not an example of leadership. Everybody has said here that Chief Glaska is a good guy. He is. He's a very nice guy. I've never had an issue with Chief Glaska. However, his lack of leadership has affected this department greatly. And it has trickled down to even my level in the fact that with the lack of um, chain of command, it takes away from my authority because uh, my guys or the guys in this department feel that they can just go directly to him as if asking for a favor. And they know that he will either grant it or he will um, listen to what they have to say and make promises. Uh, there's uh, leadership is about communication, clear, concise communication, and there's not clear, concise communication in this department. And you guys want to give him six months to fix it. Um, I don't even think an outside person can fix it in six months. However, I do think that only an outside person would be able to fix the problems that we have in this department. Um, Sergeant Scafani didn't get to finish his speech, and so I'd like to try to finish it for him. Uh, morale is at an all-time low. Uh, and the department of our officers and wait, hold on. And the department of our officers to other departments is indicative of a deep seated dissatisfaction that demands immediate intervention. Despite irrefutable evidence, the city has failed to provide a meaningful remedy, leaving victims of discrimination and misconduct stranded in a sea of governmental inaction. Mayor Rosano, will you continue turning a blind eye to the two E? EOC complaints lodged against Chief Glasgow. While you persist in disregarding the two lawsuits arriving from his discriminatory practices, will you overlook the manipulated promotional processes? Will you dismiss the pain, embarrassment, disappointment, and despair felt by the men and women of the Margate Police Department? Will you disregard disrespectful and discriminatory text messages? And finally, will you ignore the findings of the independent investigation conducted by the law firm you hired, which concluded that Chief Kalaska has created a harassing and hostile work environment? Despite undeniable evidence, Mayor Rosano and this city have failed to take action and provide a meaningful remedy, leaving victims of of discrimination and misconduct, neglected and abandoned. I employ Mayor Rosano and the commission to heed the call for transparency, accountability, and ethical leadership. It is the encumbrant upon us to prioritize the well-being of the community and the integrity of the police department over personal loyalties and friendships. Let this, let us can, rise can, can above- Can you sum it up? I mean, 
It's the last sentence. Right. Let us rise above the bias and work together to heal our broken department by removing Chief Glaskin from his position of authority. Uh, also, if Chief Glaska cared about the city and this department, he would resign. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else for public discussion on this item? No? Okay, we have a motion on the table. We have to come back to the commissioners. What's that? Is there people on Zoom? Is there a lot of people on Zoom? I'm going to ask the commission. You guys want to hear them from Zoom? Is that okay? You got it. No problem. All right, we're going to open it up to the Zoom calls. And Margate Marty. Margate Marty? It has to have a name. No, go to the next one. Unless they want to, in my opinion, Guys, if you want to speak on Zoom, if you, if you can hear us, person. you got you have to put your name down, and we'll let you speak. But go ahead. Okay, Who? that's a person. Go ahead. Some people don't live here, but they're here. Tell them right. it's fine. Hello, Sam. Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you guys. All right, go ahead, Sam. Uh, as you guys know, I was a police officer at City Market. And I'm super proud of all the officers over there for speaking their mind. Um, my career ended because of Joe. Um, it was a hard, hard decision and every day I regret it. Um, so if you guys can really understand the officers are in real pain. Um, the reason I left the, my, my career, I would have been there till this day, you know? So um, that's all I got to say. And I'm proud of uh, the Margate police officers that are there. Thank you, Sam. Who's next? John Denicola. All right. John, can you hear us? Yes. All right. Um, Good. Unfortunately, you folks have just become nationwide, um, unfortunately. And it's a shame that it's come to it, but I think you guys aren't seeing the biggest picture here. What you're seeing is you're having all these officers come forward and you're damned if you do and damned if you don't at this point. But you're trying to equate a 30 year career with an entire department and you guys, you guys have nowhere to go. You're in a corner. And it's essentially the right thing here would be to let the chief go. You're not gonna change this in six months. You're not gonna change it in, in a year. I mean, that's just fact, okay? You're kidding yourself if you think this is going to go away. You heard that the union president or the union rep tell you that there's more stuff coming out. There's more more suits that are probably going to end up getting fired, filed against the town or the city. I'm sorry. It's, you know, it's unavoidable, you know? And the people that are in the room that are for the chief sticking around, it's gonna come out of your pockets. I don't think you guys realize you're gonna end up having to pay for the lawyers to defend him. And if you guys lose, it's still gonna cost you. You're in a no-win situation here. You know, and at the end of the day, you should do what's right. The chief made the text messages, he admitted to it. You should have never done it. And by sitting there going, well, you shouldn't have put it in writing, that's more or less condoning. That's wrong. You're all wrong. You need to fix the problem, and the problem is the chief. If you got 75% of your force going, we don't want them. There's an issue here. And I suggest you get rid of the chief. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Eddie, Margate resident. Eddie, do you have a last name? Can you hear us, Eddie? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, Eddie, just give us your full name, please. It's Eddie DeCostafaro. All right, go ahead, Eddie. Well, number one, I want to apologize for not being there because of my health issues. But with that being said, this whole situation that has happened has been systemic back for years since even before Dana Watson. You can't expect Chief Galaska to fix this problem in the short amount of time that he's been there, especially with no help. 
I've known Joe for a very long time, working with him with Safety Fest and through the CERT program. He has been an exemplary police officer, captain, and in my opinion, chief. I believe that uh, Vice Mayor Schwartz had a good idea with the six months. I also think a one year would be better because he's not gonna be able to completely fix the problem in six months. Uh, my wife and I both feel the same way that a 30 year career should not end because of one bad mistake. You know, I don't know what the other text messages that other commissioners are talking about, but in my opinion, he should have enough time to try to fix this. I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Hope you're feeling well. Who's next? Andrea Grunholder. Andrea, can you hear us? Andrea? Hello? Yeah. All right. Just say your name and then go ahead. Hi, uh, Andrea Grunfelder, Margate resident. Um, I never thought that I would find myself agreeing with our Antonio Arcerio. I think he's also as surprised as I am, but he's right. I mean, Chief Galaska has been the chief for three years and he hasn't managed to change the culture to this point. What makes you think that another six months he's going to be able to make any changes? You've heard the union uh, captain get up and say that they're going to have more complaints and we're going to lose officers if we don't make a change. Why risk losing more officers and how are we going to replace them? Who's going to want to work in a department that has this kind of culture? You're saying that the text messages were sent between friends. That may be true. We've all made mistakes. We've all said things that we you know, regret, but our actions have consequences. If you're at the top of the chain, you have the responsibility to lead and set the example, and you should be set or held to a higher standard. I stand with uh, Lieutenant Moreno and the rest of the Margate <clears throat> police officers who work so hard to protect us and keep us safe on a daily basis. And if they don't have confidence in the chief's ability to lead, then why keep him? I also think that Mayor Rosano to recuse himself from voting on this issue due to his personal relationship with the chief. Thank you for letting me have this time to voice my opinion and have a good night. Thank you.